outraged Brits are rebelling against Greta Thunberg and the BBC. That's right, with the announcement that the BBC will be starring the teenage environmental radical in an upcoming series. More Brits than ever want an end to their forced financing of the BBC. We'll take a look at what the BBC has planned and how Brits are beginning to rebel against this ultra left-wing network. You're going to absolutely love this. Before we get into it, make sure to download your free gift, which we put together just for you. We're calling it our Fake News Antidote, which is a compilation of about 20 different news sites that I go to on a daily basis. And you can download it completely free at the link down below in the pinned comment section. I think you're really going to enjoy it, and it was a privilege to put it together for you. Also, let's give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, and that is the one and only Bill O'Reilly, former, uh, formerly of Fox News. Now, Bill has made millions investing over the years, and he wants to share with you his secrets on how he does it. So just watch that free presentation down below at wealthwithbill.com. That's wealthwithbill.com and discover how Bill O'Reilly plans to help you achieve a seven-figure net worth. Lucky participants will receive a free hardcover of Bill's new book titled The United States of Trump. So don't wait. Click on the link below and check out what Bill has in store for you. You'll be glad you did. All right, so the BBC is pushing a new television series starring the new darling of left-wing environmentalists across the globe, none other than Greta, how dare you, Thunberg. I'm sure you're all familiar by now with the 17-year-old climate change activist who's become the new icon of the environmentalist movement and thus a darling, a saint, a Mother Teresa for the fawning devotees of all things leftist liberal and the neo-Marxist media and particularly the BBC. Well, they've decided that you people in Britain haven't heard enough of Greta, okay? And so they're planning on giving you her in a starring role in an upcoming series. And as it turns out, all this is actually doing is having the inadvertent effect of increasing support to get rid of the license fee that all Brits have to pay. In Britain, in order to have television service, you have to pay a fee, part of which goes to funding the BBC. And if Twitter is any indicator, more and more Brits want out of paying this fee, especially in light of the BBC's incessant leftist liberalism, with St. Greta just being the latest insult. So the British Express is reporting on a massive amount of tweets from angry Brits who don't want to support this nonsense anymore. And amen to that. They, of course, have an advocate in Boris Johnson, the prime minister. He's come out and said bluntly, look, you know, maybe at one time this fee made sense, but now you're all just a bunch of left-wing activists disguised as journalists over at the BBC. So, you know, you're just a bunch of left-wing nuts at this point. So why should conservative Brits be forced to pay for and finance your nonsense? So... The upcoming negotiations with the government promise to be very, very difficult and disadvantageous for the BBC, precisely because, I mean, Boris has such a massive political mandate given the landslide win he got back in December. So Boris can pretty much do whatever he wants at this point, and he definitely seems to have the license fee in his target range right now. And this latest nonsense coming from the BBC it's frankly only going to increase support to get rid of the fee, which, by the way, could not come at a worse time for the BBC. Now, we did a video that you definitely want to check out. I'll link it down below as well in the pinned comment section on the BBC actually having to lay off 450 workers in their news division precisely because of their collapse ratings. Statista.com shows that BBC viewership in the UK has fallen from 26 million in 2012 to under 17 million today, which is a whopping 35% drop in viewership in the last six years. BBC Radio 2 has reported a loss of a million viewers in 2018. As for BBC One... They've begun to hemorrhage viewers 
from the coveted 16 to 34 year old demographic, falling by almost 4% over the last three years. And it seems members of every race and ethnicity are turning off the BBC. Minority viewers have dropped by 5% in the course of three years, and 1% of white viewers during the same time period have turned off the BBC. And as you probably guessed, the median age of BBC One viewers has been going up from 56 years old uh, now to uh, 60 years old in a matter of just a few years. Channel 4 has experienced double-digit decline in its ratings as well. So you would, you know... You would think they'd get the hint by now, <laughs> but but alas, these left-wing media liberals, they continue to see the BBC as a primary instrument to impose left-wing propaganda on the British population. After all, Greta has been a media creation from the very beginning. Again, we did a video that you'll definitely want to check out. I'll link it down below in the pinned comment section. How 200 News, 250 news outlets and so-called journalists joined the Columbia University School of Journalism to intentionally shape control of what they referred to as their climate crisis coverage in the lead up to that United Nations climate conference last year in New York. The partnership was called Covering Climate Now, and central to this control was coordinating their coverage of events leading up to the conference, as well as the speakers involved, so as to provide a consistently left-wing monopoly over all the information surrounding the conference, even inserting so-called climate news in otherwise completely unrelated stories. Some of the big names that were involved in this conference were CBS, Bloomberg, Huffington Post, of course, BuzzFeed, The Daily Beast, Newsweek, Rolling Stone, Slate, Vanity Fair, even the Weather Channel got involved in this. And as the Daily Caller notes, this coordinated activism among journalists intentionally fabricated a hero, a megastar, a saint, and that was none other than, of course, Greta Thunberg. The whole purpose of lionizing Greta was to galvanize American support for the radical policies being advocated by environmental extremists. And so this is why if you type in Greta's name in Google and scroll down to, you know, the first five or six pages, all you will see is one fawning hero worshiping article after another, after another, after another. Well, what we have to realize is this was all fabricated. It was coordinated. This was intentional, which of course means that we're not actually looking at news. What are we staring at? We're staring straight into the face of blatant left-wing propaganda. And so needless to say, there's been a growing backlash against Gre Greta Thunberg. And it started literally from the beginning. Jake Novak over at CNBC, he made this argument literally on the very day Greta gave her, you know, how dare you speech. And he noted that from the very moment she entered the world stage, there were a number of people who were not seeing Greta as this new Mother Teresa of the environment. Instead, they were seeing an indoctrinated child who's being cruelly coerced and manipulated and exploited by adults who are using her as a human shield to effectively deflect any form of valid critique or criticism against their environmental extremism. That's precisely how both President Trump and Vladimir Putin have been talking about Greta. Putin came out and said publicly uh, that Greta was being manipulated and used by some very, very evil adult. She's, he called her a misguided girl who's being exploited by some pretty horrific people. And in terms of British voices, no one has seen through this Greta charade more than Piers Morgan of Good Morning Britain, right? He had a thing or two to say about Greta Thunberg's uh, yacht trip across the Atlantic. He retweeted a Reuters headline that announced that Greta Thunberg had just docked in Lisbon after a 20-day Atlantic crossing for the United Nations Climate Summit in Madrid. And Morgan just sarcastically wrote, you know, I wish I'd had a stolen child, a childhood like this one, referring, of course, to her UN speech, her how dare you speech, where she accused us all of stealing her childhood and robbing me of my dreams. 
And even before that, Piers Morgan, you know, he took some pot shots at Greta for that ridiculous mural in San Francisco. Have you seen that? I mean, I don't know if you remember that, but if you click on the link above for that video, it's so funny. It's going to make your day. But a so-called artist <laughs> recently painted a massive mural, the face of the team of, of Thunberg, on this building in downtown San Francisco. And, and not only does the 60-foot tall by 30-foot wide <coughs> mural include some pretty freaky eyes staring at everyone in the city. Not only was it painted with spray paint, which environ <coughs> Sorry, guys, I have a bit of a cold. It was painted by spray paint that environmentalist radicals uh, want to ban, but it also looks uncannily like Vladimir Putin. <laughs> so Piers tweeted out, why the heck does Greta look like Vladimir Putin? I mean, it's hilarious. You just, you want to check out the uh, the video there. Now, what we have to understand is that more and more people, they just don't want anything to do with this little girl who tours the world, hanging out with royalty and Hollywood elite, all the while lecturing the rest of us on how to think and live. Uh, we found, by the way, that when she doesn't have her script, she's worthless. I mean, she stumbles and mumbles. She de she has no idea what to say if it's not scripted. Her, her Facebook account, we found out it was kept and maintained by her father, who wrote posts as if he was Greta. I mean, she's you know she's about as fabricated as a figure could possibly get. And now the BBC wants to force all Brits to finance some of these stupid TV spots with Greta and I think it's only going to hasten the eventual demise of the license fee and I believe eventually the demise of the BBC itself. Now before you go we just uploaded a video that you're going to love. The ratings are out for the wokest Oscars yet and it turns out that the ratings were the lowest ever recorded for the Academy Awards. It couldn't happen to a nicer bunch of left-wing activists. So make sure to click on the link, and I'll see you over there. God bless.